Thank you for joining today's Masonry Minute brought to you by the Masonry Institute of Michigan. Today we're going to cover the question, are you correctly specifying the impressive strength of Masonry, that F prime M value, on your project? And to do that, we'll compare uh, three pretty common building materials, structural steel, reinforced concrete, and lastly, that reinforced concrete masonry. If we look at structural steel, the American Institute of Steel Construction has published their Manual of Steel Construction, which includes this table, also available in Steelwise Magazine, which basically gives you the uh, applicable ASTM specifications for various structural shapes. So if we had wide flange beams or columns on a project, we can come down this table and see that the preferred material specification is A992, and that has a yield stress of 50 to 65 KSI. That's not to say that's the only ASTM that would be applicable to a wide flange member. Um, as you can see up here, A36 would also be applicable, but it may not be preferred. And so most engineers are using the preferred method, which would be that A992. For reinforced concrete, ACI 318 has a table on the limit for F prime C. Um, and as you can see here for general applications, whether we're normal weight or lightweight, the minimum F prime C is 2,500 PSI, and there is no maximum F prime C value. As we get into higher seismic regions, for lightweight concrete, there would be a maximum of 5,000 PSI that would apply, um, and a minimum of 3,000 PSI for that F prime C. In addition to meeting these limits for F prime C, ACI 318 also has requirements for concrete by exposure class. And so this would be for if the concrete's going to be exposed to things like free thaw, we'd have an exposure uh, class for that, um, ranging from F0 to F3. And that's going to have a limit for our maximum water to cementitious material ratio and our minimum F prime C. So you can see here for an exposure class of F2, for example, our maximum water to cement ratio is in 0.45, and our minimum F prime C is going to be 4,500. So pretty considerably higher than that 2,500. Um, and most designers are not using that minimum 2,500 in design, but using 3,500, 4,000 PSI, somewhere in that range. When it comes to concrete, most um, specifiers are using the unit strength method. And the unit strength method says to use table two to determine the compressive strength of the concrete masonry, that FM prime value based on the strength of the units and the type of the mortar specified. Um, also, the units are to be sampled and testified for conformance with ASTM C90. The joints are not to exceed 5 8 inch in thickness. And for grouted masonry, the grout conforms to Article 2.2 out of the TMS 602 document. So if we come down to table two, we can see that on the left-hand side, it has that net area compressive strength of concrete masonry, that FM prime value. On the right, it has net area compressive strength of the concrete masonry units. And then it's broken down into either type M or S mortar and type N mortar. So for most structural applications, we'll be using type S mortar. So if we come down here, we can see that the minimum in the table is going to be 1900 PSI. And if we come across the table where we have 1900 PSI units, type S mortar, our FM prime for our design is going to be 1900 PSI. So that would be the minimum value currently in the code. However, if we look at ASTM C90, which is for load-bearing concrete masonry units, we can see that the minimum net area compressive strength specified by ASTM C90 is going to be 2000 PSI for lightweight, medium weight, or normal weight type units. So if we go back to that table, we can see that for a 2000 PSI unit, if we come across here, we can see that 2,000 PSI unit, type S mortar, our FM prime value is going to be 2,000 PSI for design. So that would be the minimum that we would recommend. However, I highly encourage you to reach out to suppliers and producers in the region of a project. Um, for instance, here in Michigan, we have really good masonry. Um, I have a block report here from SME. And as we can see here, they didn't test it for conformance with ASTM C90. The average compressive strength of C units is shown as 4,190 PSI. So if we go back to that table out of the TMS 602 document, we can see that that 4,190 is going to fall between 3,900 and 4,500. And so we can linearly interpolate these values to get our FM prime for our project. We can either do that with a calculator or on uh, the website from NCMA, they have this free Excel sheet where we can input our compressive strength of CMU, which is that 4,190. Our mortar type, which in this case would be type M or S, and it's going to automatically interpolate it below. And we can see that our FM prime value for design is going to be 2,880. And so for this particular project, if we know those units are getting supplied, 
we can feel comfortable using 2880 and not the minimum value of 2000 in our design, which is going to save on grout, reinforcement, development length, um, as well as many other factors. So thank you for taking time out of your day today uh, here at the Masonry Institute of Michigan. Uh, we really strive to make Masonry easier by the minute.